Hi. All right, let's do this. So the title of my talk is ISO IEC 14882. Who knows what that means? And I'll give you a hint, it's not the name of a galaxy. Anyone? Nope, no audio either. All right, so that's the document number of the ISO C++ International Standard. And that's, of course, our favorite standard. It's not the only standard I like. There's also ISO 8601, which is the international standard for date and time, and ISO 3103, which is the interna international standard for brewing beer. Uh, sorry, no, it's actually not. It's the national standard for brewing tea. Um, but we're here to discuss C++, so no tea. Um, also, the other problem is, unfortunately, I cannot um, reproduce or utilize any form, any part of this document in any form or by any means without prior written permission from ISO. So that means we're not going to talk about ISO IEC 14882. Instead, we're going to talk about N4810, which is um, pretty much the same, except it's the um, draft, so it has all the new C++ 20 stuff in it. And also, N4810 actually is the name of a galaxy. So if you go back to the title slide, you see these two little galaxies here. So this is an interacting galaxy pair. So the top one, is um, N4811, and N4810 is the bottom one. But of course, we're not here to discuss galaxies, we're here to discuss C++. So uh, a couple of years ago at the uh, ACCU conference, there was this questionnaire. Uh, the question was, what's your favorite quote from the C++ standard? It came up again on Twitter, I think, very recently. So for me, the answer is absolutely obvious. This is my favorite quote from the standard. Um, I think this is beautiful English prose. I'm not going to read it out loud here because, um, well, because there's a video of Michael Case on YouTube doing it so well that I could possibly never do this as well as he does. So check that out. So the other reason why this is great is because just after this quote, there was a limerick. So beautiful. I think that's kind of the most um, well-known Easter egg in the standard but it's by no means the only one, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so another time I was preparing a talk about um, atomics and performance, um, and I was looking up this thing where, um, you know, if you have uh, two atomic variables, um, you want them to be on different cache lines, otherwise you get full sharing. So in CFSR 17, we standardized the size of a cache line, which is called STID um, Hardware Destructive Interference Size, quite a mouthful. So I was looking up the standard, and I found this, right? So you have a cat and a dog, obviously you want to keep them apart, so you want to align them on different cache sizes so that they don't interfere, which is that kind of makes sense. Um, but the annoying thing is that, um, you know how the standard has like an index and has like back references to the, the thing? So they are indexed in a very inconsistent way, right? So the cat is indexed as interfering with canines, but the dog is indexed as obliviousness to interference. And, and the inconsistency doesn't stop there. Actually, there are um, other occurrences of cats and dogs which are not present in the index at all. Like, for example, when you talk about header files. Um, so, you know, you have like cats and dogs and you have to keep them apart again, except now the cat is your friend and the dog isn't, because obviously cats are awesome. Cat people unite. But these are headers, right? So now we're in C20. We don't need headers anymore, we, we, we have modules. So if you keep looking, then with modules, cats and dogs can live happily together. So that's awesome. Uh, but of course, um, I was still preparing my um, atomic talk, right? So uh, there was this other thing with atomics. Um, have you ever tried to create an atomic uh, union? Right? Think about it. So actually you can do it, but there is kind of a weird thing. Uh, if you have like different sized variables in the union, what happens to the padding bit? So I was trying to figure this out, and I stumbled upon this in the standard. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. So there's like Celestia and Luna, pony, union of ponies, and they're having a party. Uh, okay, so I thought, oh. okay, so this is really complicated, right? So I need to figure out what's going on here. So that sent me off on a tangent. Um, I spent quite a lot of time uh, getting familiar with the uh, Little Pony franchise. <laughs> Turns out, uh, so Celestia and Luna are the two regal sisters of the uh, kingdom of Equestria, and Celestia is like the benevolent ruler, and Luna is her estranged sister, and like the antagonist of the series, and there's like really deep stuff going on there. 
Um, so I found that really fascinating, but I couldn't quite figure out what the party bit has to do with the atomic stuff. So I, like, if anyone knows, please let me know, because this is kind of the stuff where I can't sleep at night. You know, I really want to know what, what's the missing thing here. All right, but anyway, um, we talked about ponies, we talked about cats, we talked about dogs. Let's talk about zombies. So this is not, nothing new. Uh, so in C++ we deprecate stuff, sometimes stuff gets removed, like auto pointer, for example. So, but these names are still reserved. We call them zombie names. Um, well, um, this is nothing new really, but if you look it up in the index, you find this. So the zombies in the index are brains, names that want to eat your. And I find that really, really interesting. So, so um, again, like, you know, I did my research. So zombies uh, originally came from Haitian folklore, right? They were introduced in kind of mainstream uh, Western culture in the 1960s, uh, where George A. Romero had these like zombie films um, where the zombies do eat humans, right? So they kind of rip your guts out and then they eat them. But they don't eat your brains. So the, uh, the first reference uh, of um, like zombies eating brains specifically came in 1985 in the film called Night of the Living Dead. And very interestingly, 1985 is also the year where the first version of C++ was released. <laughs> All right, um, so now we're talking about films. There's more films in here. So just above the zombies, you know, you get Bond, James Bond. All right, so we don't have time for all this. There's a lot more stuff going on in this document. Really encourage you, you have a look. Um, but you know, people who know me um, personally, they know that I don't, I'm not really good with kind of jokes and puns and stuff like that. And I really prefer if the standard, uh, like the places in the standard where it's like really kind of honest, brutally honest, you know, that's kind of the stuff that I understand. So I don't know if um, any of you seen my uh, initialization talk. Um, so, one thing I was investigating was there's this weird thing where if you have direct member initializers, basically you can't use them to extend the lifetime of a temporary. Um, so there the standard says, well, okay, if you do this, this is obviously error, ill-formed. But if you do this using a constructor argument, then you can kind of circumvent that. And that is okay, unfortunately. <laughs> all right. So that's all I have. Thank you. Have a good night.